Good to see everybody. Uh, welcome back to to the veneer and the fall football and uh, excited to be here. We've had um, uh, four practices so far today and, and a pretty extended walkthrough. It's been really different, as we all know. Um, uh, it's been really, I think, hard on the guys, all, all the all the uncertainty, uh, the strain that they have on on them, the idea of of not having a lot of answers. And uh, it's one of the few times as a football coach, uh, you don't have a lot of answers to give them. And uh, I'm a big believer in controlling what you can control. Uh, and that's what's in front of you today. And that's why I've been so pleased with the guys, with our practices that we've had so far. Um, when you go out and watch practice, it's, it's fun because they're just running around, flying around, making plays, communicating. Uh, they're having a blast out there. Um, with their family and with their guys that uh, they spend all this time with. and um, But then at the end of the day, uh, uh, they see the news, see the, see the reports and some uh, un, you know, uncertainty of ways on them. I know it does. And so we try to take that away from them by, by going about our business. We have – very, very short window between fall camp starting and when school starts. And so um, we as good a job we, as we as we can with, um, with the time we have, with the information and the knowledge that we have to make it as much until we get to Sunday uh, and then we start school. Will we hear something before then? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I know that our, our, our kids uh, want to know, uh, but we, we – I know this, between uh, – um, the docs that we've had here with our guys and with uh, Matt Thomas and, and his crew, we have an extremely safe, safe environment here. Um, we follow every protocol. It's pretty cool to watch our older guys help our younger guys, making sure that we have masks on, making sure that uh, uh, guys are keeping social distance. And uh, it's been, um, you know, uh, a, a new normal that is different, but um, with how the guys have handled it thus far. So we'll open up for questions. All right, we'll start with uh, Scott Fritchen. Yeah, Chris, uh, it's been reported that the NCOP is going to move to their football season in the spring. I was just curious if the big bat, how would it affect you guys and how important would it be to actually get a football season in 2020? It's a great question, Scott. Um, one of the things that we would like is some clarity to what they do in, in no matter what. If we, we play in the fall, here's when we're starting a non-conference game. Here's the conference schedule, all those things. That's going to be as normal as we can get. If it moves to the spring, um, what is the fall? You know, are, we, are we having a spring fall right now? Is, is this time that uh, you don't want to send them home because I really believe that the environment that we have at K-State and the environment in Manhattan is the safest place for these guys. Uh, but can we continue with workouts? Can we continue with walkthroughs? Is it um, required activities? Is it voluntary activities? When will spring ball be? All those things that um, well, that uh, everybody wants answers to before they would make a final also decision. On, uh, last Monday, you said that um, the team was going to go through through COVID testing. And I was just curious the results, how many players may be tested positive. We did not have any week before we started camp. A bunch of us, or all of us are going under testing again tomorrow. We did it, I can't remember, nine, 10 days ago, something like that. And, and we didn't have any positive tests, which told us the protocols are in place here are ex extremely, extremely good. And then from here on out, it was gonna be every Wednesday and so uh, like a day, Scott, but I think uh, tomorrow, uh, the first time we test again after camp started. Let's go with John Kurtz. Go with John. Yeah, Coach, um, you, you alluded to this a little bit, but, you know, Trevor Lawrence started uh, the discussion and the argument about, hey, players would be safer in the environment. How much do you buy into that, that the best thing for these guys is to be in environment? And what kind of consequences would there be if there's not the structure of football there this fall? Well, regardless of when football is, I really believe this is the best environment. When I say when football is, is it September 12th, 19th, 26th, October 10th, or go on into the spring? 
Uh, I think this is the best environment because we have great medical medical um, on top of the, these guys and all those things. And, and so I, I really believe that this is the, the best environment. I, I worry about kids that go home. We have a number of kids from Georgia, a number of kids from Texas. Uh, I know those places have, have become hotspot in the bigger communities and so forth. And, um, you know, you, you, you can get COVID anywhere. Don't get me wrong. You can get COVID anywhere. Uh, but, you know, they're going to get fed here. They're going to get their education here. They're going to have their tutors here. They're going to have their mentors here. They're going to have all the, all the amenities that they need to be successful. Plus, I, I know that the little thing of our face-to-face -face interaction with these guys since we started last Friday has been so helpful to us as coaches and I believe to the players. You can only do so many Zoom calls with somebody um, and sooner or later you got to get that face-to-face -face interaction. And so uh, it's been so fun to see these guys on a daily basis uh, practice in the position meeting, uh, in the dining center, wherever it would be. One, one quick question I had on the structure of practice. Are, are you guys able right now, based on the NCAA, recommendations and guidelines to actually practice 11 on 11 when you're out there? You bet. We, we have had our normal practice now because of how we do things. It probably helps us because we have our, our double rep and two team systems. So there's half the team on one end of the field. Uh, so uh, there's places we've been on the all the time. It's really, really good. And, and so, no, we've been able to do what we had done in the, in the previous year. Let's go, Hey, Chris, good to see you again. Good to see you, um, yes, but if it was up to you, you and your, would your decision be to go ahead and play this season right now? Yeah, it, it would be. Uh, for myself, the coaches, uh, the players, I have a leadership council. We met, uh, I think it was night. Um, they all want to stay safe. They want to do it the right way. They, they want to make sure that we have great protocols in place with testing, with, um, you know, with social distancing, with masking and those things. And, and um, you know, we hadn't gotten into travel and those things, but I knew those were coming down the pipe a little bit, but they want to play and they want to compete. And, uh, you know, especially uh, these seniors that you only have so many opportunities to compete that, you uh, uh, it's pretty special when you go into your senior year, and, and uh, those are guys that uh, I'm really hopeful that getting an op or getting. I also wanted to ask what what are the special precautions you guys have? you know socially distance on the football football field and make sure that the stuff doesn't spread if it does. I'm sure that's somewhat difficult. Yeah, I, I think the inside stuff is where we have many more complications and many more adjustments. We used to bring them all in and they'd go to breakfast and they'd tape and then they'd come to meetings. Well, we split that up now. Half of them go to breakfast, half of them begin their taping. We always start the day with a special team meeting. Now we have two special teams meetings, you know, kind of an older guy and a younger guy so that we can, our team theater, we have, you know, pieces of white tape on, on the chairs that the guys are able to sit in so that we we can end up get guys in here and then we use uh, upstairs on the fourth floor and put another 30 to 40 guys in there. Um, position meetings are all over the building. Um, we don't use the position meeting rooms that you see. We've used West Stadium Club. Um, we've used our academic resource center. We've used everything to sit out so they're there. Although they're in the meetings, we keep them socially distant. And then uh, uh, at practices, you know, we've had Al Serby and Matt Tom and their crew have done a great job of we're trying different things all the time to how do you cover your, cover your mouth, cover your nose, and still be able to be effective as a football player. Uh, we're, we're continuing to try different masks, continuing to try different face guards. Um, you know, these pull up the guys have liked, and then they come off the sideline, take their helmet off, get their – you really got to get your breath, get away from people, and then when you're – back with your coach, you pull your gator up at the conversation. So the thing for us as coaches is they can't see your mouth moving. They can't see your face very much. So they can listen to you, but that sometimes they don't understand with your face. If you're kidding on something or if you're being serious, but uh, um, uh, we've done a really good job managing it. Aaron Kornacki. Coach, how are you? 
Great, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I guess um, my question is, you guys doing the job, you have no positive tests, but when you get to the games and there's contact and you have no control how your opponent went about being safe, you're out on the field, even if you wear masks, there's still the issue of sweat and blood and body fluids. What can be done to keep that part safe? Because to me, that's where the real danger is. I agree. Uh, one, our medical professionals doing a really good job of managing your team. And so take Dr. Goral, uh, Matt Thomason, and our, our medical people, and they're managing our team. We are confident that every Big 12 school, and those are the calls that Gene Tom every day, all day long, of making sure that each school, each team, each medical professional in that school is doing everything they can uh, to make sure that uh, we're sending a healthy, safe football team to a place and returning that in the same way. Uh, I'm, I don't pretend to tell you all, all the things I know, but what we've been told is they can um, make sure that they have their mask on and can in a combat with somebody at the line of scrimmage or some for a prolonged period of time uh, that uh, they can be uh, relatively safe. I think we all know that what's what's relative. They still get something absolutely probably. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know those things. We're just, we're following the guy people that this is their livelihood and this is their profession. And, and I trust those people. Are you people. concerned at all about travel? Um, you know, just when you guys do stay in a hotel to lobby regional, there's only uh, conference games, but um, does that concern you at all? Concern me, uh, but you know, for us, the roommates would be the same roommates you have at home. Uh, we, we don't do buffet style meals anymore. Everything is, is either plated or served to you. Like even right now, um, you know, the meeting we'd send somebody there prior to make sure the meeting room is big that we can socially distance ourselves, you know, in, in that meeting room, um, all things, the logistically that, um, have to take place before we uh, on a plane and make sure we know we're going or a bus, you know, are we going to bus to eight or in Oklahoma? That's, uh, I know those things are even being talked about. Thanks coach. You bet. Turn it off. Turn it off. Hey, Chris, could, could you speak to the responsibility players have from the, the, the football all environment? Uh, did you learn or, uh, that small outbreak when the players first came back in June. I think that was a blessing in disguise probably because it was in June and um, the kids that uh, did test positive to no symptoms or symptomatic. So uh, I know that we were fortunate there that no, heck, but they did learn some lessons. Eight guys getting together to play video games or – uh, go out and, and, and have eight or 10 guys at a pool or something. I think they learn that, you know, nobody's, nobody's going to be immune to this. If you, you know, if you don't protect yourself, you have potential to get, uh, get the, uh, the virus. And so um, you got to remember when we did that in June, we had everybody test and everybody was negative. And then um, it only takes one. And we don't even know where that one came from. You know, was it somebody that came into, town no, we don't know i mean you, you you can speculate on all that stuff but we just know one turned into three turn, turn into turn into um you know a dozen or something and so our kids were like oh this really can so then when we sent them home and brought them back and they came back they quarantined before we went uh, back into our workouts and um you could tell that uh, the guys were really cautious about making sure that they they weren't the guy that would be able that would be getting somebody uh, sick, and and uh, uh, obviously we had a really good success in July uh, because we were able to start everybody at practice and and because everybody was a negative test on that first August test, and we full well know that we test everybody tomorrow. We may have somebody that has to sit out or a group of guys because um, you know one kid. Get, and maybe three of his roommates have to sit out. Those things, I think you're always going to have contact tracing, but we feel more confident that 
uh, if I'm protecting myself at a practice, uh, mask and, and um, guard and stuff, that uh, uh, I wouldn't be a contact trace. Max Olson. Ultimately, well, you know these decisions are made at the president level in the big 12. Do you feel like you've had good dialogues and Gene's had good dialogues with President Myers about kind of where you, where you feel about all this? I'm pretty confident. I haven't talked to President Myers, and I know President Myers is, is for us playing. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that pans out with all the different presidents of the Big 12 schools. And, and like I told you guys, even today, um, guys, we only can control control. And, and that's just our effort today and making sure that we be – we improve upon ourselves as a football player today. And so we'll let those guys handle that stuff. I know they're going to have the best interest of the student athletes, health and safety first. Just how is it on your end to you know, not really have a start date or a first opponent yet? It, it, we're close. I mean, we know a probably, uh, I doubt it would be the fifth. I think it'd be more likely the 19th. So we're in camp. Um, maybe a, a week earlier than if we'd have played the fifth, we'd have been on time. So uh, they know that it'd be a mid-September. So we're also smart to understand, A, we didn't have spring ball in the summer. So we're probably slowing our installation down. Um, we're, we've built in a lot more days off so that they can get their bodies back and, and, and get their, keep their minds fresh. But well, make no mistake, every day you go out there or every day there's a position meeting because we don't have guys. I mean, we had one right before we started and we had that in Bramlage uh, because we just don't have the space. Uh, the position coaches are talking about this stuff all the time of, hey, control what you can control. We'll let the uh, the powers to be uh, the decision. Um, everybody knows Gene, uh, President Myers know that our kids would like to play. Um, and so we'll see how it plays out. Kim Bradley. Bradley. I assume that's me. Um. Uh, Coach Kleiman, uh, your first season as head coach, uh, going through everything that you've been through from pandemic to social injustices, can you kind of just give me like a reflection of your first season going into your second season, going into just such uncharted? Well, it's nothing like any of us have done as in as head coaches, assistant coaches, you know, from NFL to Division One to Division Three to high school. Um, there's not a, a coaching 101 for any of us, but there's not a player 101 manual either. Uh, and, and so we just want to continue to progress the program uh, forward. I thought we had a really good uh, last summer and fall. Uh, we're off to a good start in the winter. We got delayed in the spring difficult because everything was virtual uh, so we were having zoom meetings and stuff and kids were working out on their own that was that was a strange time we get to do proud of the guys uh for coming together for for some of the social in, injustice and racial issues that uh, were going on and, and continue to fight for those guys and fight for um, uh, for equality uh to move into then we have a bunch of positive tests to get everybody back uh, I, I know this in to, to tell the young players that this is so difficult on a young player, especially some that's just come here. That okay, sometimes football is not canceled for good, even if they postpone it, delay it. Football is going to ultimately come back um, with full full crowd, but it will come back. And so, every day you get an opportunity to go out and compete. Every day you go out and an opportunity to get yourself better. Take, most of the, take advantage of that and make the most of it. And then one more quick question. What's your message to the fans going into just such um, a strange time right now with football possibly being camped in the spring? I think Gene's been great on social media. Just be patient. You know, that's all you can do is just be patient and uh, um, pray and wish because the, these kids – it's been hard to have an opportunity to tee it up 12 times a year, you know, and none of those 12 are guaranteed. Our, some of the guys that have been injured could see that and say, dude, I, I've had an ACL, had 
uh, some injury that's t kept me out of a, of a season. Now I'm healthy and something else could keep me out of a season. Uh, and, and so to the, to the fans, just pray for you. Just continue to, to support them. Um, and uh, uh, we, we appreciate uh, for staying with our guys. Coach. You bet. Mitchell Summers. Hey, Coach. Um, so you've had – uh, I'm gonna, okay, cool. Uh, you've had one player opt out, Jonathan Alexander. What was your reaction to him opting out? Have you heard any more players that are looking at? Well, I supported Jonathan. Um, he didn't. He came in and visited with Coach Malone and I, and just didn't feel comfortable um, and needed to um, do himself. They felt more comfortable, and that's that's all there really was to it. And uh, uh, we said we supported him. You're still a part of the K State football team. Uh, it's just going to be from kind of virtual or from afar now. Uh, and uh, he's going to get a degree in December. So we're excited. And we challenged him to continue. He's a good student anyway, but we challenged him as a student to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, he was the best student. He'd get his degree. Uh, and then uh, we're excited about getting a chance to, to visit with him throughout the fall. But ultimately, um, if, if that's the plan, and, and with Jonathan, of getting him back for, for 20, 21 got a red shirt year so it's a little different for him one final other question so the the big 10 had officially put out their statement saying that the fall sports is going to be pushed to the spring what is your reaction to the players that are likely going to be losing a season well i hope they don't totally lose a season hope they get a chance to do something in the spring but um and that's that's the protocol that we we all as coaches want what's what's the plan you know, what, what is the plan for those guys? What's the plan for each league, whether they play in the fall or play in the spring? Um, and once again, let's, let's uh, rally around these seniors and find a valuable experience whenever that is to play, whether it's fall or spring. Len Jennings. Hey, Coach. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, my question, you talked about these guys focusing focusing and not getting distracted on the news that's out there with COVID-19. How much are you relying on the senior leadership, specifically Skylar Thompson, who's with these guys and with the players? Well, we rely on everybody. We rely on, on seniors. We rely on each other as coaches. We rely on our medical staff. I don't want to put all the pressure on, on one on one individual in Skylar. He He's done a phenomenal job, a great leader through a lot of the things this summer and getting guys out there and throwing seven on seven. I think it's a collage that just have to continue to maintain positive uh, and be positive, especially for the younger guys that they don't really know coming to college for the first time and not quite sure what to expect. It wasn't anything like their recruiting trip, I can assure you of that. And so um, the, the leaders have done a really nice job of, you know, kind of guiding and answering questions for the freshmen. It's as hard as it is as a freshman camp. And then you think we're really putting those freshmen in a bubble of they go to Jardine, they go to Jardine and come here. And that's all those um, early June. And that's, that's difficult to do. So um, proud of the guys, our leadership council and our seniors have done a really good job continuing to educate and help the players. Uh, if I can throw an actual football question here at you, okay. who are who are some guys who stood out to you during the first couple of days in camp? Well, um, offensively, Skyler being the in the, in the system, you com more comfortable and confident he is. I really I I am pleased with the progress that he has made in the off season, um, meant as well as physically. Uh, uh, offensive linemen that we're learning more about. You know, we really haven't had any real full hard contact. Josh Rivas looks a lot more comfortable. Katori Levinson looks a lot more comfortable. Uh, excited about the addition of Briley Moore. I think he would be a guy that we would lean on quite a bit as a tough Nick Lenners. Uh, we have a lot of, you can name them, wide receivers. We have a really deep core there. Uh, and lots of, lots of options at running back, Larry and, and, and Tyler Burns. On def you can tell he's put on a lot of weight. It is a defensive end. 
Um, he put on 20, 25 pounds and still has great explosiveness. He's been really impressive to me. Uh, Drew Wiley and Eli Huggins, we had some great D tackles in there uh, um, with Mitty and Deshaun, but I, I, I'm excited about those two guys doing a really good job. Nice to have Justin Hughes back uh, from a leadership standpoint. And, you know, just we have a number of guys returning on defense that you can tell they're just so much more comfortable in our system. Uh, it hasn't changed, even though Joe's calling it now. Uh, it hasn't changed. The, 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 the system's the same. The guys are more comfortable. You can see the practices are much more crisp. There's a lot better communication. And uh, overall, as a whole, through just a handful of practices, I, I, we've made great progress. Ryan Black. Hey, thank you. I hope you're doing well. Did, did, did you get that? Okay. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Uh, I guess as a follow-up on, on, on Jonathan Alexander real quick, is the choice about you kind of saying him being a virtual part of the team, like like doing the Zoom and things like that, was that more his call not to be here on campus, or was that more you guys saying just to try to minimize the number of people we would prefer if you're not going to be playing this year to – be at home well don't get me wrong he, he just oh, okay locker room and some of those areas you know it's all about health and safety mm -hmm. and, and so we're going to keep him safe and healthy and keep him away um from from the guys you know having him on the practice field and stuff like that that doesn't make any sense so um you know he'll be a part of everything but when i say virtual he won't be on the sideline mm -hmm. at games and stuff that let's uh, we'll, we'll speak, um, but uh, uh, we'll have a number of responsibilities, and some of those responsibilities uh, are us. Well, and, you know, given the way things are, I know that we're not really going to get to come out to practice like we were a couple of times last preseason, but when we were out there last year, we did get to see, for instance, like a Chris Heron, who's no longer here, obviously moved to wide receiver from quarterback. Is there anybody this year you've already said, well, he came in at this position, we've already wanted to try to cross-train him somewhere else? No, probably not uh, in lack. Really impressed with our freshman class. Uh, we have some really talented kids, uh, especially a couple of, of, of running backs that I think are really electric kids and uh, some defensive backs that uh, get the game. TJ Smith would be a kid that would help us this year. He just understands the game of football, but credit TJ, he works his tail off at it from the mess standpoint so um but right now we wouldn't move anybody we like where we're at that's on for dorney sorry uh you talked about not having spring practice i was just curious now that you're out on the field what what do you think you missed by not having it and are you are you trying to pick up where, where you thought you would have? Probably the biggest position, and everybody knows it, would be the offensive line not having spring ball. When you lose five starters uh, and it's, it's five guys that have to work as one and they've never worked together, that's the biggest thing that uh, um, as we came into fall camp we were concerned about. We needed to make sure that we keep moving those guys forward. The communication is really Really good. Noah for Holtorf is a great communicator. Uh, and so he's kind of the anchor and the guy that talks the most. And, and so I've really been impressed with Noah. It's just all the other guys. We've had probably eight or nine guys that are battling for those positions that we didn't get a chance. Try this guy at, at the left guard rather than the right guard. Let's try this at tackle rather than guard, vice versa of trying to mix and match to get the best five uh, and find out who the next one is. So who's the sick? Grievous last year that step in whenever Curl would come out. Who are the sixth and the seventh? But just the continuity at that position is so critical um, because five guys have to work. In, and, and for us, with as many guys as we're there, it's going to be eight or nine guys working as ones. So we need the most work on for sure. Okay, last two here. Let's go Cam and Bradley first. All right, so you came in last year having to replace Coach Snyder, legendary head coach. 
had a great season, um, then have had to try to navigate through this pandemic and everything that's gone through this summer. Have you still at all, even through all this, felt you may have felt coming in the season or has it kind of been, you know, lifted off your shoulders because you've had to go through all of this? Well, you always feel pressure, but that's from within. Uh, but no, it's, it's much more comfortable. It's like, or uh, anybody else that's been in the system for a year, you, you know how things work. Uh, you know how things operate. You know people uh, in the facility. In it. So I have I think all of us as coaches uh, have felt much more comfortable in year two. Now it stinks that we lost all of the, all of the, the winter and the spring and the, and the summer, uh, but uh, it, it allowed us as coaches to be around each other probably more um, because nobody took any vacations in the summer. We just saw each other all the time. That was, in, in hindsight, probably a good thing. Coach Standard coming in, um, his family was still in Syracuse, so he was with every day in May, June, July, uh, getting ready for the season. And typically, we'd have been in camps and then on some vacation time at this year. So um, I think there's a lot more continuity with our staff. John Kurtz. Yeah, Coach. Um, one thing that was mentioned: the "We Want to Play" movement that got started. Players. Uh, or, you know, hey, we may want a players association and call a body to represent us. Uh, do you think that's something that would be for the game and to have for the players? Well, I think uh, how you do that, you know, I, I think it was great. And then some other players, you know, kind of echoed his sentiments of being people know. I think it was important to let kids felt comfortable in wanting to play. Uh, and that's uh, something I think presidents needed to know um most athletic do know it because they're around guys so much Uh, but no i thought that was a a positive thing and hopefully they can figure out a way to do something like that Uh, it's just so different because everybody's on such different schedules you know the nfl everybody has otas the same time everybody has their uh, combines their their mini camps and stuff at the same time for us for some people that press spring ball in February, some that have it in April. I mean, every, there's so many differences in college football, but it'd be great for um, some of the guys to come together and, and maybe that from a, as a power five, we can maybe nominate, you know, 20 to 30 kids from each conference or 10 kids from each to be a part of something like that. Coach, just from your just your standpoint, watching this all play out, uh, Missouri Valley, what they had to do, uh, uh, just as this all, what's it like for you to just see kind of how how difficult this is becoming, and um, just how do you kind of reckon with this? Uh, you know, I know it changes every day. If you'd asked me in March, I'd have said football is going to be in the stadium at this time of year. Are we going to be able to bid? 75, 50, whatever. And we, once we got to May, uh, there was a time where I was like, boy, this just isn't going to fly. I just don't know how we're going to do it. Late May or early June, I thought, boy, this has really got a chance. Uh, then I saw some of the nation of what, what things are going on uh, outside. Okay, we're getting a little bit tougher again. And then all of a sudden it clears up again. And you think, oh, we, we have a chance. So every day is different. That's the thing that – um, as as a football coach, and I'm not saying myself, as football coaches, we want to be coaches. We want to get out there and talk animals. We want to get out there and talk technique. But we need to be leaders more than we need anything right. And leaders uh, amongst our, our leaders on the team and help those guys that are going through difficult times and be there for the guys that, that young kids, freshmen, sophomores, uh, that don't know what what's going on, and we don't have all the answers for them. But we just need to be there. We need to be. Uh, we need to listen. We need to, and we need to make sure and let those guys, everybody, know that a it's going to be okay, and we're going to find a way to make this right. Thanks, Russ.